In this video, we will learn how to model joints in RCB. We'll look at some of the tools to automatically create joints in the software, but in this particular case, we will do it manually. We will then change the type of joint that is modeled in the model and solver settings. We're going to RCB. We're going to model a joint in this area on the level one slab of the model that we've been working on. So this area is going to be a, uh, a pool. So it's going to be stepped down from the level one slab. So we've already put in our floor thicknesses and we've also put in loading. So we've got some heavier dead load in the, in the pool area and some live load is present as well, a bit heavier than the rest of the slab. So one way, if, if this particular area is going to be stepped down, say 1.2 meters, for example, one particular way that we could do it um, is to model it directly. So if we were to go to 3D view, we could put in an intermediate floor between the, the ground and level one floors, and then just model the pool that way. So for example, we would just have a, a, a separate floor here just for the pool. Uh, that's one way of doing it, but it starts to get very messy, uh, very a bit tricky with the modeling. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a joint. So why are we creating a joint? Um, basically, the underlying assumption in all of the inductor software is that the floor plate is able to transfer um, is able to transfer all of the, the forces, the bending moment in particular, via any steps that um, that any steps that exist in the slab. Now, if that step is too great to transfer that moment, then we have to model a joint. So basically, that's the design decides that the person modeling decides whether or not uh, they can detail the particular step in the slab to tr to have full transfer of the force. In this case, we've got approximately a 1.2 meter step from this um, common area down into the pool area, so we're not going to be able to do that. We have to model some sort of joint. Now, in the um, under the Edit tab, we have some tools inbuilt into the software to do this automatically, but in this particular case, they're not so useful. So we have this Edit Cut Create Joint tool. What this does is it will create a joint running basically the it's just in a straight line. So for us, it's not so useful because we have to model this zigzag shape. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to do manually what the um, what the create joint tool does automatically, but across this shape. To do the very first step is to create a gap between. Um, these two areas of different thickness. Now, the program will remember thicknesses as they are and also the loads as they are as well. Now we'll start by creating the gap. So to define the gap, we use geometry lines or we can copy the existing ones. So approximately 100 mil is okay. So I'll copy this by some distance. And as with this line, and this line as well. With the structure remeshed, we can just color by thickness again. We see we haven't lost the slab thicknesses. Specify void in the area where the joint will be. Specify zero thickness. We'll just double check that our loads haven't been lost as well. So no, that all looks good as it was before. 
that's all good. And the final step is to stitch this gap. So basically we need to have, we stitch it together with small beams that we will convert to joints in just a moment. So we specify uh, beam elements, something very small. So let's say for example, 0.1 meters by 0.1 meters width by depth and pin pin. And we'll just turn off the walls visibility so I can just see what I drew. And we just copy it across at some distance. For example, one meter centers. isn't too important. The important thing is that we've modelled a gap where the joint will be and some short beams at some distance. So if we mesh again and update, this is what the joint looks like. So a small gap and beams stitching that gap together. Now the final step, if we want to avoid an error during the analysis, is we have to set these short beams as joints. So this is un done under settings, model and solver settings. And we have to do this before we perform the analysis. So we have to check on under general settings, short beams into joints, and then we specify the type that we want. So shear fixed, axial fixed. Me, and all, this means there'll be no transfer of moment through that joint. And then if we just press this uh, question mark button, we can just see the uh, basically the where, the direction of the various forces. So in this case, no moment will be transferred through that joint, but we will have shear fixed and axial fixed and hitting OK. So basically that's all there is to it. So the just reviewing the steps finally, what we did was we manually created a gap of approximately um, 100 mil in the uh, basically the the line of the joint where the joint will be, and then we just stitched that joint together with beam elements, small beam elements, let's say about um, 100 mil by 100 mil, uh, at let's say one meter centers or even half meter centers will be fine, and we just copied them along the length of the joint, uh, spanning perpendicular to the joint. Finally, we switched on short beams into joints under model and solver settings.